So recently I switched teams at Microsoft and this is actually pretty common at large tech companies. For some quick background, I didn't say like apply to another team, like I didn't apply for a program manager position on the Xbox team or on the Office team or something like that. Rather, I sort of switched teams as a part of a department reorganization. And usually this happens where they might shift some people, but not everyone under different leadership, depending on where the leadership determines priorities are. So for example, senior leadership might see one team has too many resources and another team doesn't have enough. So they might take those people and move them to the other team. That's sort of like a very rudimentary explanation of that. I'm sure there's a lot more analysis that goes into it, but that's sort of what might happen. Or they might just determine that a certain product needs just more people to work on it. It's more critical, so they might take, you know, maybe they might take a TPM, a software engineer from another team. I don't wanna say like that team is less has less priority, but maybe this other product is really, really critical to some effort that Microsoft is going through. So they might take those people and just say, hey, you're gonna move to this team now so that we can really uh, drive the development of this project. So that's essentially what happened. So I still work in Azure and I still am basically in the same department and I still even have meetings with people from my old team. So it's not really like I moved far away. And when you're changing teams, your responsibilities can sort of change, especially with program managers because program manager positions, as I mentioned before, are a lot more fluid, a lot more flexible. So the responsibilities of a PM can vary a lot based on the team that you're on versus say a software engineer where you're still gonna primarily be writing code and doing software engineering. As I mentioned in the previous video on my old team, I was pretty much sort of like a software engineer where like 70% of my day was spent coding even despite me being a program manager position. I did other stuff, but I also did like a ton of coding like every day. But on my new team, my responsibilities have sort of changed and I thought it could be useful to sort of go over how things have changed, what a more technical program manager responsibilities sort of look like uh, in case you're interested in pursuing a career in the program manager or TPM uh, fields. First off, I was sort of tasked with driving, leading, planning, organizing the machine learning approach of the project I was working on or currently am working on. I can't talk too much about the specifics of what I'm actually doing or what the project actually is, but essentially I was sort of, you know, chose, I don't know if I was chosen, it was part of a reorg, but I could say I was chosen or assigned to figure out how machine learning and machine learning approaches can fit into the project. And this is really awesome because on my old team, I had machine learning experience as well. And also I think machine learning is just pretty cool. So. so with this, I was basically given like a lot more responsibility because essentially I was like one of, if not the only person that's really primarily focused on this machine learning implementation and approach. Now there are some other people that I work with, but I'm sort of like the main, hey, if you need, like if you have questions about the machine learning or you have suggestions, go to Michael, basically. <laughs> and being given this responsibility was really cool because I could sort of you know research and investigate what I thought might be the best approaches to implement certain functionality that we're looking for or different approaches without having to deal with you know, pre-existing like massive code bases or massive outdated practices, anything like that. So it's it was really just an awesome opportunity. But with this also comes so much more responsibility, as I mentioned. So I basically have to figure out how to implement all of the necessary machine learning approaches, how, you know, the entire flow, uh, the planning, the organizing, the, the compliance, everything like that. So I'm actually not coding as much and instead I'm doing like a ton of planning and logistics with maybe a sprinkle of coding every other day instead. Essentially, I figure out and plan the roadmap for this machine learning. For example, that might include, okay, what user stories actually need to be written right now so that we can sort of get this thing off the ground? What other teams can we talk to that may have had or done similar approaches in machine learning or have had similar flows with what we're trying to do. Also just doing research into machine learning approaches, frameworks, 
uh, platforms, anything like that. And also all of the tangible things that come out of the things I just mentioned. So whether that's like creating roadmap diagrams or creating research documents or working with engineering managers and software engineers or working on UI mockups or UI displays, as well as just presenting the actual documents and plans and sort of my vision on where to take things that I'm responsible for. I'm also a backup meeting host, so I work on a team with three TPMs. So say when our primary TPM is out, I basically have to fill in for him. So that includes hosting and going through all of the uh, grooming sessions in you know the agile framework so if you're not familiar you basically have to groom user stories to make sure they're ready for engineering or ready to be worked on by pms so i had to do basically host and run through both the pm grooming session and the engineering grooming session as well as doing demos sprint demos for pms and sprint demos for engineers as well as doing sprint retrospectives which is sort of like a reflection on the past sprint with pms as well as doing a retrospective for the engineers as well so all of that normal agile process stuff as well combined with the main machine learning stuff that I'm also focusing on. So I'm definitely coding less, but I actually really like what I'm doing now because of that responsibility, but also that opportunity to, you know, see where we can sort of take things and what are the best approaches. And it's just, it feels a lot more rewarding, you know? But I also feel a lot busier, whereas compared to, say, on my last team when I was, you know, coding 70% of the time or whatever, um, and I was still working on machine learning stuff in my old team, but I was doing more like actual coding things, and I would maybe have like two meetings, I don't know, a day, something like that, sometimes more. It was a lot more planned out because, you know, as when you're writing code, and I was technically acting as sort of a dev, a software engineer on that old team, uh, it was a lot more planned out, so I didn't feel as busy, I guess, because I just, you know, knew I was going to be coding primarily that day with two meetings. Whereas now it's just like, okay, I'm gonna, I might code a little bit in the morning and then it's like, oh, I have to run this meeting. And then I might get called into another meeting for a software engineer on a different team to ask them questions or, oh, I have to, I have to submit this research document or this onboard document. Oh, I have to reply to these emails to other teams. Oh, yeah, I have to present the roadmap to upper level management or uh, this person is calling me into the a meeting to ask me questions about or give me suggestions about machine learning stuff or other things that I'm overseeing or anything like that. So it just feels a lot sort of busier, I guess, because it's a lot more fluid, a lot more flexible. But honestly, it just keeps things spicy, I guess. So that's sort of what I do as a TPM. And I really highlighted the machine learning stuff as that's one of my main priorities, but as a TPM, you can generally, not you can, you probably will have multiple things you're overseeing, and I do, I just didn't really talk about them. As a TPM, I oversee, you know, machine learning stuff, as well as, you know, other features in the given project. So as well as keeping up with all of the machine learning stuff that I'm trying to do, and all of the planning and logistics that, that goes into just trying to get that off the ground, there's also all of these other features that are going at the same time that I might not be directly responsible for, but I'm sort of overseeing or that can tie sort of into what I'm doing primarily or that I just need to make sure that it's still on track. And that's sort of, again, what a TPM or a PM is sort of designed to do, or that's how I envision them is to make sure whatever you're working on, the project, the program, the product, whatever you're doing is running smoothly. So team collaboration, planning, making sure engineers are staying uh, productive, making sure that the stories they're getting are actually written well. Uh, and that goes into a lot of the agile processes that I mentioned before with hosting meetings. And, you know, it's not like I get to study machine learning approaches every single day for eight hours. I don't do that. It's still a lot of just process stuff too. That's really important in general software development. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to talk a little bit about how my responsibilities have changed compared to my previous team as a part of, you know, a department reorganization rather than like applying to another team in case you are maybe interested in what TPMs actually do. And again, TPMs, positions and responsibilities can vary a lot based on whatever company you actually work at. 
So like I even mentioned in this video, my TPM role on my previous team was doing a lot of coding, whereas now it's doing a lot of planning in different aspects. So again, it's going to vary based on what you work on. That's it from me. I hope you guys liked the video. My name is Michael, giving you bad British accents at the end of every video. Check out one of my past videos and my past self would thank you dearly. And check out one of my future videos. My future self would also thank you dearly. Hit the like uh, down below if you uh, like Cowboy Bebop. Also, comment down below any suggestions you have for future videos. I make college advice, computer science, tech, career advice videos. If any of those sound interesting to you, consider subscribing to the channel. It would mean an absolute lot. That's all. Hopefully I'll see you in a future one. Bye-bye.